curious to know your perspective on um, your understanding of competitive advantage when the pandemics or something like external forces are going around you that is rapidly creating rifts that's beyond your control so how would you how would you what would a company do i'm i'm curious no no see we got to change our mindset the only judge of competitive advantage is the preference by the consumer you get to know that you need to anticipate you may have people coming totally outside your industry and work backwards from there and it has to be earned every day now take amazon the b2w in brazil is ahead of amazon in brazil think about that it's owned by 3g they want to throw there is a huge hand to hand competition of amazon and walmart and flipkart in india consumer prefers whom competition against geo against walmart against amazon so here you have to earn it every day you may have some advantages like amazon does because of the skill they got now and the cash they have now but there are plenty of other niches to go after but a uh, uh, target is succeeding a uh, walmart is succeeding a uh, home depot but they're taking a market share of those who are not digitized and so the other guys need to wake up interesting and uh, so is there any wrong way it's like so um, if if you are doing something from your vantage point where when do you say hey this is not the right way to do it like, what's your what's your perspective on that no 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 no, no. rishal the key part is no two company ceos are the same no two companies are the same no two cultures are the same so we go from very high levels to the ground level the differentiation is at the ground level the high level is a powerpoint presentation it doesn't work so the skill is to be specificity and clarity for that company what will work for them they need speed today speed is a competitive advantage and and in in from your vantage point what are some of the misconception so when it comes to understanding of yes. competitive advantage yeah. what yeah. what what do people get it wrong yeah one conception number one i have hardware of a big plant big stores competitive advantage it's not it's insufficient it is data and its use and it's an ecosystem you have multiple people on your platform it gives you flexibility you can change prices at will respond right away many of the ceos have not experienced that number 2 many of the ceos have not gone directly to the consumer directly without the layers living with them a company like procter and gamble requires people to go and live with the families unilever does it colgate does it that has to come people have been lost in the in pre covid in the numbers only that's in and they got to go to school there's a company in boston that goes to mit with the full team management team one day a month you learn it you do it figure this out so those are the things the conception all developed before 1997 did not take into account the speed of change the personalization and the machine that does that personalization and that it creates what i've come to call concept of increasing returns all hard asset companies are on concept of diminishing returns the management needs to learn that software in front causes increasing return concept interesting so from from your vantage point uh, so when when we when we talk about say competitive advantage so is that um, is that what differentiates you from the competition as as the name suggests 
or is it how you are mesmerizing your customer so from your vantage point like is it is it comparative feature or it's it's your ability to do, do your job better no. where do you see no 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 there's a different reference point in the game of speed and personalization your first focus how to create value for the customer second focus is it better than competition not the other way around when you go back all the theories that mm -hmm. we had in 70s five force analysis strategic intent core competence they do not have what we create for the consumer and also create for the shareholder at the same time and is it better than competition that personalization did not exist So the old techniques are over. Interesting. You should, you should unlearn those. They were good at that time. Hmm. The core competence of many of the incumbents is obsolete. It doesn't work. It will kill you if you get hung to them. Because the core competence is based on slow speed. Hmm. They're not agile. stick to your knitting was good then but in this hyper speed that knitting may be obsolete just think about delivering in one day that did not exist before and free at cheaper price and the company that does it earns a ton of cash every day but they don't show that in gap accounting. Cash is cash unless there is a fraud. Gap accounting is a destroyer of mindset hmm. because it misses the relationship of PL and balance sheet. Amazon, more it grows, more cash it generates. Think about that one. It has a hoard of cash. Now it is investing 50 billion minimum. If they invest properly, it's going to create growth, isn't it? So the way they invest money, they link to the increase in revenues. Most companies don't do that. Hmm. It is directly linked to either cost reduction or revenue generation. It's a discipline. We didn't do that. That's a that's a very interesting point. So, um, in, in in data world, so so we talk about art of doing business and science of doing business, right? So there is so data. If you if you are relying too much on data, you become slightly more predictable, right? Because your decision making is based on data, and data is again. Uh, there's a very structured algorithm that are defining it. But if you look at businesses in the past, they were in a in, in some ways an art project, right? So how they do business, how they wow their customer, there's there's a there's an art and a science to it. So when you when you hear the world the word data a lot when it comes to the context of business and going future and all that, how what do you think is is uh, from your mindset, how it's impacting the competitive edge, or how much of competitive edge is science, and how much of it is arts? Like, I'm I'm curious to know from you. So, number one, asking the right questions from the data is an art. Data itself, without that art is not useful now a number of questions have been automated but there is a further art in the brain in what are the questions observing a consumer observation is an art data can validate on a large scale basis So when you go to the 
customer and say, what does he prefer? You perceive, you create hypothesis, the data can cross check. You have a new competitive advantage. You did that determination and the design of it has a lot of art in it. People don't understand design of an algorithm has art in it. Mm. I can get you same algorithms and same data, two different designers. You will see different items, different outcomes. There's an art in it. Mm. 